less earnest. The last name is E-A-R-N-E-S-T. Should I get my badge or you don't care? No, just, just if you can say your name. Larry Tesler, T-E-S-L-E-R. I, I was an early user and uh, some of the things I did uh, became common later, but I wasn't really directly among the group of people creating the internet. Okay. Les, on the other hand, was a pioneer in networking and also uh, very involved in the internet rollout. So, Les, can you tell me mostly can, the guy can, when you started working on the internet, when, when you well, first became aware of the When the I first started on networking was 1956. When we designed the first computer network, which is the Sage Air Defense System, uh, which was the technological marvel and a total fraud, <clears throat> uh, it didn't work as a defense system, never could have worked. Its major deficiencies were kept classified so that the contractors could keep it going for 25 years, extracting hundreds of billions of dollars from American taxpayers. And their descendants are still doing it today. But that's another story. Wow, a new story in there somewhere. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I also helped develop the specifications for ARPANET, uh, and uh, we were involved in getting that going. And still later, I helped Vince Cerf set up his project that developed TCP IP. Uh, I was not directly involved in that, other than just getting it started. So, that's roughly. Okay. So, you were helping Vince around mid 70s sometime? Then? Yeah, 73. Yeah. yeah. So, when you were working on the defense projects and start, the start of networking as such, what kind of systems were you working on back then? Uh, well, we had the C system had six levels of packetized. Uh, digital communication. I focused mainly on weapons control, which used packet radio, uh, and I specified the guidance calculations for missiles and manned interceptors under that system. I also got permission to use nuclear warheads, which was an outstandingly bad idea, but we got we got the approval, so. Working in this area at the time? Or? That was in Boston area. I was uh, started working for MIT, uh, and then uh, we spun off into uh, MITRE Corporation, which was a nonprofit that they used to step out of uh, the Sage system. Had since they had, I think, figured out that it was a fraud uh, that they had started. <laughs> Were the Soviets fooled or not? The Soviets were not fooled at all. Okay. The major deficiency of that system was it worked only against cooperative bombers that did not use uh, radar jamming. So all the demonstrations that they gave carefully avoided radar jamming. And the Soviet spies undoubtedly saw all that. Uh, so it ne we never fooled them for a moment. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> Actually, I've got to run, Larry. Could you, yes. Would you mind holding your, the mic for a second? I'm just saying, you said you were a user. Yeah, I'll... More I'll of a user. So if you could just give us a few words on, on using TCP IP or, or your involvement in any way. Yes, I will. Just very quickly, because then we can, okay. I think, we oh. a bit of a sit down. Um, yeah, I was doing a project for Les, actually, at his recommendation, to develop what now would be called a markup language with built-in scripting. And that was one of the first markup languages. And uh, it was an ancestor of uh, the World Wide Web, hy hypertext markup language. Another ancestor of hypertext markup language was an Apple product called HyperCard that I was the engineering manager for. So I had some influence on what became the web, but uh, only incidentally uh, uh, involved with TCP. Uh, another thing I did was a very early open source application program, which was that very same markup language. It was something that any, but any university in the ARPANET who asked for it, we would send it to them by FTP, and they could modify the source code and change the features.
And that was uh, 1971 to 73.